Welcome back friends of the internet and in this video we're going to have another look at server actions. We're going to deal with UI flashes, we're going to deal with form submission prevention if the form is empty and we're also going to have a look at cache revalidation such as why is my UI having old data and how to get fresh data. And all of this we are doing by creating a dynamic to-do list completely with server actions. So stick with it and keep rocking and let's go. Let me explain you the application structure first. So we have a simple static to-do list here. And this to-do list is basically iterated and we have a to-do item that doesn't do much. It really only is a list item with a few classes and a input type checkbox that when being clicked just says clicked box. All right, so far the item, easy, right? And the other thing we have is this form here to add a new to-do. So in that one is really just input type text and a submit button. And we also have a controlled form. That means that every time the input changes, we also change the value in the state. This helps us later on to use this state to submit it to the server. But right now, the form doesn't do much. It just calls prevent default to avoid a page refresh. And it also sets the title back to empty. So if we say like test and we go add, it says form submission and then back to empty. That's it. But now we want to implement the to-do list in a dynamic way. So for that one, I've built a JSON database API, which we're not going to have a deep look into it, but just to show you, this is the structure of the JSON and this is going to be updated, right? So we want all of these to-dos in our page. And to achieve this, we will import this API and I just write import all as to do API from my utils. Then I can use the methods from that API, which are add to do, delete to do and get to do's, all of which are async functions. And now the good thing about server components, not talking about server actions, but server components is that they can be async as well. So make sure you have the async statement in your server component. Now, instead of having this static list here, we want to say await to do API get to do's, which will give us all of the to do's from the JSON database. Now let's save that. And here we go. We get all of the to do's. Nice. That was easy, right? Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to allow the form to add a new to do. And for this one, we will be using server actions. So let's create a new server action. Add new to do. And this is going to be an async function. And now attention, please. If you've watched my previous video, we've been passing the action directly to the action attribute to a form. And then basically it got the form data passed and it worked. But server actions are more flexible than that. So you can pass whatever. I'll show you how that works. So basically the only thing that we really want with a new to-do is the title for that to-do and that's a string. And then we are going to call await to-do API and then go like add to-do and we are passing over that title. But also what we need to do for server actions is to give the proper directive, use server. And now we can pass this action to our form. So add new to do equals add new to do. And in our add to do form, we're just simply going to pass this. And for convenience, we're going to use any as a type right now. And now what we can do is basically simply call this action and we will pass the title. But since we don't want to do empty submissions, we'll just go if title trimmed length is zero, then we don't want to do anything. So we just go like return and do nothing. All right, now let's have a look what happens if we use this. 
So we'll say, okay, we want a new entry and that entry is learn server actions. And I press add and you did probably see a little flash, but the issue is the page is not being updated and understanding why this happens is extremely crucial for the new Next.js. Let's go back to our page. So what we're doing is the following. We are fetching the to-dos from the server and then we are adding a new to-do. But basically we're not really telling Next.js anywhere that things have to be updated, not on the front end, not really on the back end. We are only using the to-do API to update the JSON database, which was updated, I can show you. Basically, this is the JSON database and there's learn server actions, but it's not showing. Let's reload the page. It's still not showing. There's many things that we can work on here, but let's start with one. Next.js by default caches everything it can. So basically, whereas the old Next.js kind of said like, okay, if you have get server side props, then you're opting out of caching. This isn't really the case anymore. We have a mix now, but this mix comes with understanding that Next.js by default caches. And Next.js cannot know when to cache and when not to cache and when to update the cache. And that is why Next.js provides something that's called server mutations. And one of those functions for server mutations is revalidate path. So what you're saying with revalidate path is, okay, Next.js, you're having probably a cache under the following path, which is the root path. But after you've updated the to-do list, I want you to revalidate that path. So update the cache basically. Now, Implicitly with server mutations, there comes another thing that you have to do because if you're calling server actions manually, as we do here, and those server actions are doing server mutations, as we're doing here, Next.js documentation states that you have to wrap it with the use transition. And that one goes like this. You import the use transition, which doesn't take any arguments, and it returns if the action is pending, so if it's running basically, and a function with which you can start this transition. So instead of just doing add new to do, we're going to call start transition and then add new to do. All right, let's refresh the page and see if that helped. Let's try to add another item, my new item. And now the weird thing is that you told Next.js to revalidate the cache of this path, but it still has the old data. So I refresh and I refresh and I refresh, but I still get the old data. Let's have a look at the terminal that runs the server. It says we're requesting the base path. And this base path is fetching from the to-do API and it says cache hit. So the problem is there's an API fetch request that is being cached, meaning that even if the page was refreshed all of the time, it would refresh itself with the old data all the time. So why is this happening? It is very important to understand that this is happening because my to-do API is actually part of my Next.js application. So I am using fetch within Next.js to grab the data. Let me show you how. I have this to-do API here, which actually does fetch the data from this API here. And I'm using the fetch within Next.js. And now Next.js goes like, all right, you're fetching from that path. I mean, I've seen that path already, so I'm like caching it for you, which is nice, but I don't want it to cache it for me. So what I can pass to fetch is next revalidate zero. And when I'm saving that, it's actually avoiding to cache those requests. So now you're seeing cache miss, which is good. All right, so problem one solved. That means for you, if you would be doing something like a fetch request in here, and you expect the API that you're calling to be 
always having like very recent data, then you should definitely be passing next three validate zero. Now let's check if adding another item works. That works, awesome. Okay, so we have our add new to do. Now what we want as well is delete to do. So let's create another server action. Delete to do, async. And now again, we don't want form data really. It's sufficient to just pass an ID, which is either string or number. And then again, use server directive. And we'll use the API and say delete to do. And we will pass the ID. And since we know that when that's done, the view of the base path, so this, this page, what you're, what you're looking at right now, should change, we're better off calling revalidate path slash to tell Next.js to dismiss this cache. All right, now we're passing the delete to do to the to do item. And we need to adapt the to do item. Let's not use any for now, but instead actually pass the exact type and it returns a promise and the promise currently doesn't return anything. So now do you remember what we said about server mutations and about what it means and about what it means that revalidate path is a server mutation and what you need to do when you're calling server actions with server mutations. That is, you need use transition. So we're going to go like is pending and start transition. And then we are going to call start transition and inside of that, we are going to call delete to do with the ID of that to do. Let's try that. Okay, I did learn server actions, I think. Let's check it. All right, my new item, check it, check this one, check this one, check this one. And now actually I have to go swimming. So at this one works fine, but we do see some UI flashes. Let's first talk about why the UI flashes and not just like how to fix it. If we open up the inspector and go to the network tab and then clear it out and then add a new item, we see that a lot of things are being done in the network. For example, webpack hot update for the hot reload and layout CSS with some hash being added and another layout CSS with another hash being added and this is essentially the problem. So what happens is when you are in dev mode, so npm run dev, and you're using something like I do right now, like Tailwind, which is part of the compilation. So it's not like a static CSS file from a CDN that doesn't get reloaded. But what I'm having is actually styles that are being updated all of the time. So if the cache is being updated, styles are being updated, and this is being done here in the dev mode. And this essentially is the layout flash that you're seeing. But good news is that there's different behavior in production. So what we want to do right now is we want to build this. But in my case, I need two terminals for that. You might not. I do because if you have the server that is fetching data from an API, which is part of itself, you need the server to be available whilst npm run build is doing basically the static generation. So it's actually quite easy. I just run npm run dev, so the server runs. And at the same time, I'm doing npm run build. And now that that's done, I can stop the dev server and I can close this window and I can actually start the production server. Now let's see if that works. Let's reload. Let's also clear this inspector. And now let's add another item. Cool actions mate. All right, that looked good. Now let's close this one and close this one and close this one. And you're seeing that you're not seeing layout CSS updates, which is nice. And you're also seeing that all of this works properly. 
and it's actually really fast. All right, let me conclude. Server actions are more flexible than you think. I showed you how to not just use them with passing it to a action attribute in a form, but I showed you how to trigger them manually, even though I would propose you to use them as action attribute in a form, because then it's more like progressive enhancement and it would even work without JavaScript. All right, friends, this was another video about Next.js server actions. And if you want to learn more about web development in general, just hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions about this video or requests for new videos, then just hit me up in the comment section. And now have a great day, have a great week and be nice to each other. Cheers. See you next time.